our friends and neighbors. Thanks for coming back to my channel. This is me, Stella Hendricks, and I am excited for today's Playboy review. This is another Girls Next Door era uh, Playboy with Anna Ferris on the cover. I pointed out before the belt she's wearing right there. If you get Bridget's collectible, uh, you know, the cover where they have um, the different covers with Holly, Bridget, and Kendra on the separate covers, Bridget's wearing almost that exact same belt. <laughs> I think that's so cute. I love her. Okay. So, we're going to jump in. And it's, yeah, on the, the bunny on the cover, not hidden. It's just her necklace. <laughs> The world's only Playboy Club. Oh my gosh. I wish so bad that it was still open. I would 100% throw some kind of party there. I would think of an excuse to throw a party there. I really would. Oh, for a minute, I thought this was a Kentucky Derby because of Holly's hat. <gasps> no, I think that's the Jazz Festival. Let me see. Ugh. These ones are kind of funny because they're so many small pictures. You can't really see them very good, can you? And I hate sitting up so close, but I feel like it's too far back here. I don't know. I'll find a happy medium eventually, I'm sure. The Jazz Festival. Look at this lady's huge bunny necklace. She looks like she must have been a playmate back in the day or something. I like her bangs. Jaden, oh, there's uh, Sarah Underwood, who is my babe. Oh my gosh, a redhead. That's like spotting a unicorn around the Playboy Mansion. They had hardly any redheads, which I cannot fathom why. Redheads are totally my fave. I love the super fair skin. I love the pink nipples. It's so beautiful. Ah, okay. Ah, oh, the house bunny. <laughs> Asphyxiate myself on my own saliva. That would be amazing. In the new comedy, The House Bunny, Anna Ferris, strutting her sexy comic stuff as a Playboy bunny, gets booted out of the mansion and, down on her luck, becomes house mother to seven socially inept sorority women. Played by such up-and-comers as Emma Stone, Catherine McPhee, Rumor Willis, and Kat Dennings. Ferris produced the movie from her original idea, which Legally Blonde writers Karen McCullough Lutz and Kirsten Smith brought to screen play form. The film features the Playboy Mansion with appearances by Hef, Holly Madison, Bridget Marquardt, and Kendra Wilkinson, and several playmates. Uh, one of them is Sarah Underwood in there. She's, I just love her too. One subplot plot finds Ferris's bubbly, ditzy like a fox character being by turns fascinatingly funny and horrifyingly embarrassing to a straight arrow good guy who becomes her unlikely boyfriend. Anna was why I wanted to do the movie, says Hanks, the affable son of Tom Hanks. She's made a name for herself as a sort of great comedian. She can do anything. The character is her baby. She came up with every facet from her quirks to the way she dresses to the whole mindset. Anna is the one doing the really brave comedy stuff. I'm the straight guy following her lead. Asked whether in real life he has ever dated a woman remotely like Ferris's character, Hank laughs. No, I don't know that I'd say if I had, he said, but I think it's a funny and sweet movie. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so cute. I didn't know that she was so big in the uh, production of that movie. That's news to me. I knew, that, obviously, that she acted in it, but... Aw, oh, that's cute. That's even cuter. I like it all the more. I like that phrase in there, too. Ditsy like a fox. I'm gonna use that one. That's a good one. Brigitte Bardot. Ah, oh, we need to talk more about Bridget Bardot. $23,325. Amount of the fine levied against Bridget Bardot for provoking discrimination. What? 
discrimination and racial hatred in 2006 letter in which she criticized France as Muslims. Okay, maybe we don't love her as much as I thought. Ah! I hope that was a mistake. I mean, that it was like, you know what I mean? Ugh. Well, that's not fun. I thought it was gonna be like some auction where she sold like her fabulous bikini for some movie or something. Oh. Well, I guess that shows, you know what that does show, you know, that you can never have like such an idol that you feel like you can't criticize them. It's really important, I think, when you have something that you admire to also like really kind of look for their flaws too, because they're going to have them. And if you admire someone and you think they're flawless, you have been deceived, my friend. <laughs> so that was never a go. good lesson for me. Okay, this is a hilarious advertisement. And also, I love her dress. <laughs> the longer you wait, the better it gets. Ooh la la. I do love her dress. It is a little bit dated. It is very 2005. What year is this? 2008? Yeah. But it's cute. I like it. Geek love. Amanda Corey won this year's Beauty and the Geek competition. We can't say we were surprised. Oh yeah, this is also super interesting. Cause y'all remember how obsessed I am with Jasmine Fior. And one of the top 10 takeaways from the Jasmine Fior story was about Megan Hauserman. She originally, I think, got her like a reality TV start on this Beauty and the Geek show, not this season, like an earlier one. But um, that was just so interesting to see all of these worlds kind of like interconnecting with each other. Very cool. And with Amanda struts the stage in the international 2007 Hooters swimsuit pageant. Good for her. Wait, 2007. Oh wait, no, that was the wrong one. I recently went to the Hooters pageant, which I think is usually in Las Vegas, but that year it was up at Lake Tahoe. Hooray! I lived most of my life up at Lake Tahoe. Yeah. Okay. Eh, I'll spoil you. Here you go. Woo! Beautiful. Ooh, that's a nice one. I am seeing a few people right now. One is a policeman. I do like a man in uniform, an authority figure. The whole uniform thing is so sexy. And the hand cuffs are a plus. <laughs> oh my. Oh. oh boy, I almost skipped right over it. Anna Ferris. Wow, we have matching hair right now. <laughs> I dyed my roots and I used a different dye than I usually do. And I am remarkably blonde now. <laughs> I feel kind of a little bit like a Barbie doll. Although it's also kind of taking me back because I really, I really loved The Girls Next Door so much when it came out. It was so meaningful to me. I don't think I watched it until like a couple years it was over. I kind of found that whole bandwagon a little bit later after most people, but for just where I was in my life at the time, seeing those girls and seeing their happiness and seeing them being like free and sexy, it was so much to me. And um, I just got this crazy idea in my head, like I had never done before, that I was gonna bleach my hair and I was gonna be blonde. And I had been a redhead like my whole life. I'm like naturally dark, kind of strawberry blonde-ish, you know, I don't know. And then I had dyed it red for a long time and I loved it red. But then I just, I felt like I just wanted to try it out. I wanted to look like Holly Bridget and Kendra or something, you know? I don't know exactly what I was thinking. But I went ahead and bleached it. And when I bleached it, it I'm sure it didn't change my personality. But somehow it really suited me so much. And when I looked in the mirror, I saw someone like 
Holly and Bridget. I felt like, oh, I could be like them. And it just gave me confidence. And I felt like I just believed in myself more. It's a weird, it's a weird thing, hair color and women. It's a weird, it's a personality thing. But anyway, sorry, that was a great tangent. <laughs> me and Anna Ferris are matching. The best bunny in the house talks about raunchy human hu humor, those gawky teen years, and what it's really like hanging out with Hep and the girls. Hopefully, you had more clout in your new comedy, The House Bunny, in which your character lives at the Playboy Mansion as part of Hep's entourage, but gets tossed out and is forced to work as a house mother to a sorority of socially inept women. Ferris, about three years ago, I was thinking, what happens when a bunny gets a little too old and it's time for her to move on and adjust to a different reality? I had a dark version with the character becoming a drug addict and returning to her small Christian Alabama town, but that wasn't very commercial. I pitched the character to the screenwriters of Legally Blonde. They wrote a treatment and I pitched that I pitched it with them all around town dressed as the character and saying the lines we created. Adam Sandler's company, Happy Madison, and Sony said yes. And three months later, we were shooting the movie. It has been a weirdly positive experience. Okay, seriously. And I'm so glad that she got with the writers of Legally Blonde because that, I feel like, is the best blonde movie of them all. Because Elle doesn't have to give up her femininity or her sunny, happy-go-lucky, I've been accused of being Pollyanna attitude. And... Uh, she also is able to accomplish difficult tasks that people thought would be too much for, you know, a, a silly little feminine thing like her. And that movie just like sat all those expectations on its butt and oh, I just loved it. I loved it. And so that story of, oh, the bunny gets kicked out of the mansion and goes home and goes, what a boring, what a boring, depressing story. I despise depressing stories. This one is so much more fun and I'm glad that it went the way that it did because I thought that it was sweet and positive and not, you know, ugh, so many of these goddamn morality tales. I'm so over them. <laughs> uh, Playboy, Holly Madison, Bridget Marquardt, and Henry Wilkinson appear in Scary Movie 4 and now all three as well as half appear in The House Bunny. What do you know now? What do you now know about the girls next door that others don't? Ferris. Of course they're physically fit and attractive, gorgeous, and maintain their physical appearance, but I also think they're the friendliest and most welcoming people I've ever met. There's such an accessibility about the girls next door, and they were all so friendly and sweet and cool, I was in awe. There didn't seem to be any competitiveness. You don't find that kind of generosity much among women in Hollywood. I kept thinking, I can't believe this is my movie, and we're filming here at the Playboy Mansion, and Hef is in our movie. Playboy, what was your first ever experience with Playboy magazine? Ferris, I was nine probably, and it was in the forest with a neighbor's dad's magazines. They were totally erotic. It was amazing. I hadn't really seen women like that, and I wanted to be like those girls. That's why it's amazing today, especially with the girls next door, how accessible the mansion and the Playboy idea have become. Playboy, you look so sexy and toned in the house, Bunny. It wouldn't surprise us if Hef and the girls invited you to stick around the mansion for a while. Ferris, I haven't got the nails for it. Also, the amount of maintenance it takes isn't for me. But yeah, they kept inviting me over. At the time, I was so tired, but now I can't wait to go back. I like hanging out with really imaginative, dramatic, and flamboyant people. <laughs> me too. Those are the best people, right? <laughs> Flamboyant, that's a great word. <laughs> Whatever it is, I think it's coming closer. <laughs> Southern Charmer, slither up to Miss September and say hello. It's slither up because I think she's got a pet like bow constrictor. At first I was confused and I was like, what? That's not very nice. <laughs> There's something irresistible about the delicious dichotomy of Valerie Mason. She describes herself as half tomboy, so you're as apt to catch this Cajun spicy 20-year-old from the small town of Monroe, Louisiana, four-wheeling or playing with her pet boa constrictor, Mitch, as dressing up in vintage outfits. I just love hippies, she professes. 
I'm the type of girl who can just chill and hang out with the boys. She says, I always had pet snakes and lizards that we caught in the yard. I also like going four-wheeling with a big group. Sometimes the four-wheelers get stuck in the mud and you have to push them out. I don't mind getting dirty. It's fun. Four-wheeling is the most fun in the entire universe. If you've never gone mudding, you need to go. <laughs> After cleaning up, Valerie switches gears and puts her six years of jazz dance and ballet classes to use. I don't have dance shoes anymore, she says, but I play around in the living room. Just don't ask her to demonstrate if you see her at a club. She laughs at the suggestion. People would think if I, I was crazy if I busted out with a ballet move. Everybody already cracks on me for those old school 1970s and 1980s CDs in my car. They ask, what are you listening to? Quality music, that's what. <laughs> One of the people Miss September listens to, we're delighted to say, is Holly Madison, who encouraged her to submit Polaroids for Playmate consideration. I found Holly on MySpace. <laughs> MySpace. Emailed her and asked if I had a chance, reports Valerie. Holly said my pictures looked great and the magazine asked me to come in. I tested it on an episode of The Girls Next Door, and when I saw myself on the show, which I watch all the time, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. I can't wait to hold the magazine in my hands so I know it's real. For Valerie, it's getting realer and realer. She recently moved into the Playmate house near the mansion and plans to take acting classes. Like every other Playmate, she says laughing, a few readers should be cheered by her taste in men. I like shy guys. The mysteriousness intrigues me. If I had to make the first move, I wouldn't mind. Marriage is a distant thought, though. I'm not going to say never, but I don't see that point right now, she says. If you can find somebody you like having sex with and love at the same time, perfect. In the end, I don't really care if I'm single or with somebody as long as I'm happy. That's right, girl. Right now, living at the Playmate house is the experience of a lifetime. Good for you, babe. I so am right on with all that. Okay, I love her pictures. Uh, in her uh, uh, her centerfold, you'll see her with her ballet stuff, and she looks beautiful. I just love it. But her boobs are so big, she looks like she's gonna topple over. Like she has too big of boobs to be a ballerina, and I can say that without malice because I take ballet classes all the time. I love ballet, and my boobs are way too big for me to be a ballerina. I look exactly like this, like I'm going to topple over <laughs> in a very sexy little pile, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay, what's next? Oh, Mad Men. Okay, I love Mad Men's aesthetic. I love the vintage style. There are certain storylines and episodes of that show that I really liked, but mostly I gotta tell you the truth. I was not super in love with Mad Men because I just don't like depressing, long-winded, self-important, masculine sulking. <laughs> Which is basically what I thought that show was about the entire time. People who had everything in the world, happiness at their very fingertips, and instead decided to sit around and talk about the darkness of life and drink whiskey and read Ernest Hemingway. Fuck that! Are you serious? Get the f out of here. If that coffee doesn't keep you up all night, I'd like to take a shot. <laughs> all right. Page three, girls. Woo. So many boobies. You know what, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're just gonna run through and we're gonna see the boobies real quick. You know why? Because there's a great variety of them in here. And that's what we need more of in our life. We just need to see different shapes and sizes. The best, the best thing about working at the strip club was seeing everyone's tits and they were all like totally different, all gorgeous. Like honestly, they were just so unique. It was like the best experience. Oh, we're still going. We're still going. <laughs> we got more. Now it's over. 
<laughs> oh my god. <sighs> okay. Not everything that happened in Vegas stayed in Vegas. Oh dear. There goes Running Bear now. Get it? Like the bear rug? <laughs> the bear skin rug? Whatever. Feel like there was one. Oh yeah, okay. The Playmate News is always fun. And they got it in the back of these. There's Miss Sarah Underwood. Here, I'll just let you guys look at it for a sec. And on. Oh, that's what it was. I show you guys this bucket. My favorite playmate is Miss February 1955, Jane Mansfield. She was in the first Playboy I ever saw in my early teens in the 1970s. I was living in Europe at the time, and when I saw her size and proportions, I thought, wow, is that what American women look like? <laughs> By uh, Sean Tao from Iron Man and the Mentalist. <laughs> All right, very cool. Well, thank you so much, friends and neighbors, for stopping by once again uh, for this uh, Playboy review. We're going to keep going for a while, I think, with the um, Girls Next Door era Playboys because of the Girls Next Level podcast being so popular and everyone's talking about it and stuff. So I think I better keep up with that. Also, I got like those stacks and stacks of them from a friend a while ago, but I'm also kind of starting to miss my vintage Playboy reviews. So we're gonna throw a couple more of those in there as well. I got this new one. Well, it's not new. I just haven't reviewed it yet. Uh, from the 19, 1968 uh, that we're gonna check out pretty soon. And also I have uh, the, like, the Showgirl Next Door, Holly Madison's Guide to Las Vegas, that review. So if you're interested in any of that, uh, feel free to check it out and I'll catch you on the flip side.